So in the second part of the scar compositing, things get very serious. I encountered quite some problems while recording this section of the tutorial. So first I decided to re-record it, but while re-recording I thought, wait a second, why not actually showing the problems that occur in real life productions and how I'm about to solve or create workarounds. So this will be a tough one, but bear with me, in the end it will pay off. Because let's be honest, how can you truly learn if I'm not going to show you the actual problems? So let's get cracking. Kraken, vart är den? Jag ska kliva den med min yxa. Oh, Viking against the great Zack McCracken. That hurts sich nach einem großen Spaß. I copy the skull process out and bring it up to the area where the background is located. Well, bloody shiver, it's already there. If you have this node there already, you are good. Make sure it's fat though. View it. Oh, this looks very, very shabby. Shabbity shabby. Well, of course, this doesn't look so great, but we're gonna bring this further. First, let's examine why this doesn't look so good. A uh, quite important reason for that is the missing floor reflection inside the ring and the shadows. Do not underestimate those, as they are very essential to make the ring feel integrated. A small note at this point, since Fusion 9 we have a special camera, a spherical camera. It means you can actually use that to create an HDR image of your scene. But for the sake of this tutorial I want to show you another method you can utilize. Before I show you how you can fake floor reflections, let's see how this looks at the moment with our color corrections applied. Now this is almost like magic. See how with very simple tools the image completely transformed. It's almost like we applied shadows. Of course the depth of field adds quite some realism and cinematic feel to the whole image. Ok, to make the ground we need to go back to where we started. You can see there are some deactivated boxes which are named Cube Map Reflect Gloss, Reflect Extra and Cube Map Diffuse. Nanjada, nanjada. In our case we don't need a 360 degree map as we have only a ground. Which means instead of creating a rig with cameras pointing in all directions and do overkill, we utilize something completely different. Something smart. Let me show you. Come closer. Hey, closer man. Closer. So create a renderer or simply copy one we already have. And I branch out from here by creating a router. View the renderer. Woohoo! Remember this bad boy here? That's how we started. So okay, with the renderer selected, in the renderer type, we're gonna choose Arnold. No, Vire. No, Mental Ray. Pa, Mental Ray, that, that rusty bugger. I bet it's Redshift. You got a Redshift in your ugly face. I'm gonna punch you in the face, you bitches. We choose the UV renderer and look what happens. Bang! What the hell? No panic. Simply go over to the image tab and set the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Bang! What you see now is sort of a texture and light bake of our scene. And we can use this to fake our reflect map. Now this renderer does not need a lot of performance, so you don't need to create a breakout, but it depends on your machine, of course. For now, copy the renderer over and branch out here. Without changing anything, we get our perfect pass. Don't forget to hook it into the wireless node. Now here, my output node disappeared and I really don't know what happened. So let me do a quick search here. I know that you have it cause you are using the latest template. So just grab a cup of coffee and I will be back and running in a minute. Okay, back and so at some point it overlapped with my reflect extra output node. Funny. Anyway, so sorry for making you wait. Let's move on. So hook in all the UV renderers into their output nodes. And now if I view them, of course nothing to see as me fool have not turned them on yet. So select the whole dark blue boxes and nodes. Hit Ctrl P. And then the diffuse pass.
That was all we had to do and now we grab all those cube map wireless nodes and bring them to their box. Right about here, where the orange box pops out. Now simply paste them in as instances and I put them into their box. Now this cube map pass needs to be composed in about the same fashion as our floor ground. As you might have noticed, I skipped one reflection pass and used the diffuse pass instead. This was first a little accident, but then I thought this difference was so tiny that I'd rather ignore one of the reflect passes and therefore performance and disk space. The difference will not be noticeable later on. So let's move up to our floor composite and simply copy this construction and bring it to the cube map passes and hook them in. Make sure you have the passes in the right order, with the diffuse pass being the last. Now the diffuse pass is way too bright and you can simply add a brightness contrast to darken it using the gamma or simply add a gamut node after the cube map renderer. Now it would probably have been better not to add the gamut to the reflect passes but only the diffuse pass. If you feel adventurous go ahead and try it. But maybe after you've completed this course. Um, if we compare the ground pass with the cube map result, you can see it still looks a little different. But that is because I used the diffuse pass instead. This is no problem as we can adjust this using a simple color correction later. For now let's move back down and test this cube map. We need the scene elements. The cube map scene. This includes the camera and the skull. Again, paste an instance into their box and the camera at the bottom, the skull at the top. I bring in a replace material and hook in the skull. Now do not hook the cube map into the replace material, that won't work. What you need is a cube map node. It is basically the same as the sphere map tool, just for cube maps. So let's take a quick look at the cube map tool. The cube map allows you to use three different types of HDR styles. The vertical cross, you've seen it. A horizontal cross, you've seen that too. And the one we are after is the separate images. That is because we have created just one image that basically resembles the top view. If we would have a proper scene with more than just a floor, we would set up cameras facing in all directions, which would then give us separate images for all sides, all directions. But again, since Fusion 9 we have a spherical camera, so in that case you would be better off using that. In our case, as I said, we have only the ground and I didn't have the spherical camera back then, so this is totally fine. Now I have not experimented a lot with this setup and I found that it was better to hook this image into the left the right, the down and maybe the front and the back as well. Now before hooking this into the replace, we need a reflect material. So drop it in already and hook it into the reflect color material now. And the background tool into the color slot. If we view this now, this is how it looks. And on the ring it looks like this. Now it's not too shabby, but I felt the texture was too small as the ring is actually touching the ground, therefore being very close. What we can do is, after the color correction, we do a very cheesy transform operation. Let's put the size to about 5. Select the reflect material and set both the glazing and the facing strength to 1. Actually, I regret I did this, so I should have left this to a Fresnel effect, uh, even though it's metal. So again, play around with this after this course. Now that the reflections are much stronger, I felt that there is way too much structure in here. So I thought it could become more calm by increasing the size again. Select the transform and bring up the size to 8. We can also try to bring in again 
and then a lips mask. I view the ellipse mask and adjust it a little bit. I invert it. If you zoom in, you can see some bandings going on here. Now, of course, it gets intensified as we are viewing the mask with a lookup table on. And masks should not be viewed with a lookup table. But if you experience any problems, just switching over to the image tab, choose custom and now you can choose the custom bit depth and resolution. The resolution in most cases doesn't matter as fusion masks are resolution independent. It means wherever you hook the mask in, it will adapt to the resolution used on. Let me prove it to you. I would change the resolution to 1024 by 1024 and you see nothing changed. Okay, I go back to the controls. Crank this up and maybe this a little smaller here. And then I set the gain to about 0.09, just to make the ground reflection a little less flat looking. Okay, now let's make a scene out of this thing. I add a Merge 3D and hook in the camera. And now we need a renderer. Again, I go back and choose one. Go back and paste it in. Hook it into the Merge 3D and view it. Now again, the 3D view was without the LUT. That is why after the renderer, because we are viewing it with the LUT, it will look much brighter. Since I want it to look just like in the 3D view, I will apply another gamut. Now you gotta put this whole space to sRGB. I don't get it. Now as we are getting closer to do breakout, it would be a good idea to save your file. Might be crashing. Check whether the saver is activated and the render path set correctly. Again, you can use my path or naming or just use your own. Before hitting the render button, you would probably want to know how this looks on the final ring though. So let's go ahead and add this to our ring. I copy the wireless up to the skull composite and look out for the box saying skull floor reflect. Paste it in here. Then we need a boolean again. Set the operation to add and alpha to do nothing. Okay, again, it's not too spectacular. Uh, let me check another frame. Perhaps bring in a brightness contrast and change the gain a bit. And I will actually view this with the ground. So I move up there. The first thing that came to my mind though is that I used a color correction to give the impression of moss growing. Remember? Therefore the whole thing looks slightly greener. So not sure if it really matters at this point. But let's add this to the floor reflections. So where can we do that? We could create a new preprocess section here. But since this course is already super huge. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. So after the brightness contrast I added before, I simply add another color correction and put this a little more into the green. It would be a good idea to view the last note now. Now we got some big time problems going on here. Now this is because I was foolish enough to improvise while recording. Uh, but I thought it's a good life example on how to deal and solve problems. So I will show you how to fix this later. I'm a pirate, that's why I like to fool around. <clears throat> For now let's focus on the ground reflections, which you can see here. And it kind of makes it feel more integrated, especially when moving. Before I forget, we need to add the ground as a matte object. So let's move back up here and grab our ground displays. Go back and paste in an instance. 
abandon all the ride, and in the mat options, set mat to Ismet. Yeah, it's like a Turkish name, Ismet. I view the merge here and then I move to the frame where we saw the intersection with the ground. Frame 234, for example. You can see that the stone is supposed to cover the skull, but in our floor reflect pass we still see the whole skull. Simply hook the override into the Merge 3D here and immediately you can see the matte object is added. Now although it's barely visible in a still frame, in the animation it will become obvious, so please be careful. Now let's compare the skull without and with the reflections. I will toggle the boolean on and off. And you can already see how this adds to the integration. I think we can live with this for now, so let's do a breakout before we continue. Again, check your paths and render range and that other savers are deactivated. So guys, I'll see you in the next episode where we are going to fix the issue with the red bandage we have.